Uh, I want to draw your attention to uh, the, uh, the 19th of November this year, the US, the United States CDC updated its autism and vaccines page. And uh, they updated that to state, and I quote, the claim vaccines do not cause autism is not an evidence-based claim because studies have not ruled out the possibility that infant vaccines cause autism. Studies supporting a link have been ignored by health authorities. Scientific studies have not ruled out the possibility that infant vaccines contribute to the development of autism. However, this statement has historically been disseminated by the CDC and other federal health agencies within HHS to prevent vaccine hesitancy. And two days later, the T, uh, your, your TGA um, put up a, um, a statement on their own website saying, the evidence shows that vaccines used in Australia are safe, effective, and not associated with autism. Um, who's wrong? Is the CDC wrong? Uh, Professor Anthony Lawler, uh, Deputy Secretary of Health Products Regulation. Thanks for that question, Senator, and the opportunity to speak to this issue. Um, Look, policy decisions of the US CDC and the US FDA are really matters for the US administration. The questions uh, of that nature should be directed to them. But I do have a number of observations on this matter. As you highlighted the, uh, in my role as the, uh, as the head of the TGA and with the Commonwealth Chief Medical Officer who's sitting next to me, we did, we did make that statement because I think there are some fundamental challenges with the statement. It has not yet been proven that there is no link between vaccines and autism. It's a basic tenet of science that if a claim is made, the onus is on the claimant to provide evidence to support that claim. So this is one of the ways in which we distinguish between uh, claims that are scientific and claims that are pseudoscientific. So there's a whole lot of theory involved in that, things like the verifiability of claims and preparing falsificationism, but in essence, a theory is considered scientifically valid if it can be tested and potentially proven false through observation or experiments. I know we've had conversations before around, around how to, to, to represent it. So an example would be that the only way to verify a claim such as all birds are white will be you actually look at every bird, which is not possible, but on the other hand, if you see a single black bird, that's enough to disprove or reject that claim. So while an identified link would prove that there is a causative relationship between vaccines and autism, you can't just use evidence to prove something doesn't exist, just you can only show that there is an overwhelming volume of evidence against it. So this is why the responsibility has always been on individuals or groups claiming linkages between vaccines and autism to prove those linkages. And to be absolutely clear, that linkage has not been proven. In fact, when Andrew Wakefield first claimed in 1997 in the now comprehensively discredited Lancet article, which has been retracted and thoroughly debunked, that there was a link between MMR and autism, even he understood that the burden was his to prove this, again, the burden that has not been met. Consequently, it makes no sense in terms of basic science to suggest that there being no proof that something exists is somehow supportive of the argument that it does exist. Because by this argument, we could just as easily say that we claim that chicken nuggets cause autism because there's no evidence that they don't. Or we could say that vaccination, uh, we can't say that vaccination doesn't make you excellent at something because nobody's proven it doesn't. This doesn't make sense from a scientific point of view. These might seem like flippant examples, but they're intended to show that proving the absence of an association is not consistent with the scientific approach. What we do at the TGA and what the CMO and I reflected in our statement is that we accept and review all of the evidence and determine whether that evidence supports or refutes the claims made. And it's important to note as well that there have been multiple studies over decades involving millions of vaccine recipients, all of which have shown no demonstrable causative link between autism and vaccines, vaccine ingredients, vaccine schedules or vaccinations. Key examples include a comprehensive 2014 meta-analysis of more than 1.2 million children thank, that thank found a... Thank you, you Professor. I think you're reading... Would you like to table the document you're reading? I'm happy from? to table yeah. it. I mean, okay. one, one of the challenges we have, Senator, is that there is a, a, a lot of um, focus on small studies and large studies with millions of subjects that show no evidence are, so, are so frequently you, just pushed to the so side. So you're able to point to, to, to any um, studies which categorically show that there is no link between the childhood vaccination schedule and autism that, that categorically show that point. That should be achievable. So key examples include a comprehensive 2014 meta-analysis of more than 1.2 million children that found no link between vaccines, including MMR, thiomerosal or mercury, and autism. 
So odds ratio, which is how much more likely you are to have something if you have the, you have the intervention not can, can you hovered around one point. Sorry? Can, can you provide, even on, on notice, can you pr provide a citation? Okay, to so I'll, I'll answer the question. Um, yes, I can provide uh, multiple studies right. over decades with millions <coughs> of participants that demonstrate no causative link between are there, those. Are there any studies you can draw attention to which uh, study the entire schedule? I mean, before a child is... Uh, one year old, they're, I think, uh, subjected to uh, uh, 29 or so, whatever the number is. Um, it, could it possibly be that there's a combination of antigens, that antigenic load, which is something which should be studied? Has that been studied? Are you aware of any uh, studies which uh, uh, show that there is no cause causative link to autism in that circumstance? So there was a 2019 Danish study of 657,000 children that found no increased aut autism risk after MMR vaccination, and there's also a 2013 analysis of US data, US data on cumulative antigen exposure over vaccine schedules which showed no association with autism. So there are also a number of studies which show a link as well. Um, you're, you're suggesting here that the CDC are wrong, and are you able to categorically uh, rule out childhood vaccination, either individual vaccines or the entire schedule, as a causative factor in autism? So I, I'm struggling somewhat to, to explain in a different way, uh, Senator. Uh, I'm not saying that the CDC and the FDA are wrong. Um, questions around their position are questions to be placed to the US administration. What I'm trying to explain is that, is that um, the way science works is that if there is a theory, you collect information and you either support that theory or you reject that theory. There have been multiple studies over decades involving millions of vaccine recipients, all of which have shown no demonstrable causative link between autism and vaccines. The studies that you're specifically referencing, it may be better perhaps for those to be tabled because there are a number that have significant methodological flaws. Uh, and, you know, well, that, that's the, the, the criticism of those which say the opposite as well. So, no, uh, no, uh, the criticism is not on the outcome of the study, um, Senator. The yeah, criticism it is, of, is they, are, they are highly criticised. Well, the criticism is not... Sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. Point of order, I would, would just ask that in asking your question that the Senator allows uh, the official at the table to respond to the question without interruption. Absolutely. Um, if we can let the official respond to the question that's Go ahead, but we don't need a 12-minute answer for short not, time. So. I don't think it's continued. Well, I, I, if, I'll, if I need your advice, I'll, I'll take it, but I'm not asking well, for it right at the moment. Actually, it, let's just... Um, let's just... It is well, late and... Through the chair. We'll do it in the, in the common manner. If we're all directing traffic, please continue, Professor Law. Well, you're not the chair. You're not the chair either. I know that. I know that I'm the chair. Uh, senators, um, I will provide. Seems a like we've hit a, hit a little, uh, little point of, Senator uh, Antic, of that sensitivity. I'm here. just dealing with. Obviously, sure. we are trying to, to deal with your uh, question and uh, knowing that you uh, are very passionate about this issue, I, I would like to hear Professor Lawler's right. answer as well. So, if we can just hold the interjections, we can get the answers and. Uh, and, and listen in silence, if possible. Thank Very you, good, yeah. Professor Lola. Thank you, Chair. Uh, look, I, I don't know that I have a great deal uh, more to, to add to the response. Um, the, I've, I've endeavoured to explain the way in which um, evidence is incorporated into decision making. Uh, I've highlighted the fact that there have been multiple studies um, of a, of a uh, significant level of rigour with a uh, high population studied. Uh, over many years, including meta-analyses, which is where um, uh, randomised controlled trials are examined across multiple trials to understand the uh, clear trends and findings. Uh, and um, I would also just, um, just point out that when we uh, assess these articles and the articles that come in making claims, we do not assess them on the basis of the outcome. We assess them on the basis of this scientific rigour. I'll ask you again, uh, can you categorically rule out childhood vaccination, uh, the immunisation schedule, either individually or in their total uh, combined form as a causative factor in autism? So, Senator, on the basis of my um, previous uh, endeavour to explain how evidence is incorporated, uh, there are multiple studies uh, looking at millions of children over many years that indicate no link between vaccines and autism. So you're ruling it out? I, I, I've answered your question, Senator. Oh, it doesn't sound like you've ruled it out. One way to do it, would it not be to have a study comparing um, children that have 
have the schedule and those who have not. That was done in the United States with the Henry Ford study. So it's been done on a, would, would that not be a simple way for the TGA to, uh, uh, to settle this? Because that obviously would show uh, no causative link. I should point out that there are now, as we was reported last week in the media, uh, one in 27 Australian children are diagnosed with autism in 2025. Um, and that is something in the order of uh, one in 10,000 back in 1986. At the same time, the childhood immunisation schedule has increased dramatically. There would seem to be a question to be asked there, would there not? Well, thank you. Thank you for that question, Senator. And, I'm, and I, I, I do note that this is a very um, important issue for a number of reasons. We're seeing um, significant efforts around the world uh, to undermine um, community faith in... Uh, well, in well. So, Sorry, I, I, sorry, Senator Anti, can we let Professor Lawler answer the question? I think he was mid-sentence still. So there are a number of um, factors that um, that uh, cause uh, concern with. I mean, you've cited the Henry Ford Health uh, response, and um, as an example of research that could potentially be undertaken in Australia, uh, we have responded to um, questions around the Henry Ford Health study in Senate Question on Notice 25 slash 001581. Um, and again, this is a really good example for our previous conversation of, of the fact that we do not make judgments on um, studies based on their outcome. We make judgment on studies based on their scientific rigour. Um, the paper itself had several methodological issues, uh, including the sample size of unvaccinated children, the characteristic of two groups were statistically different. We've had a conversation previously around placebo-controlled trials. Um, a higher order of, um, of rigour in the hierarchy of studies is, is the randomised controlled trial, and we saw statistic differences between the two populations in this study. Um, the length of time unvaccinated children were followed up was much shorter than for vaccinated children. Comparisons were made between children who received no vaccination and children who received a range of either one vaccination or multiple vaccine, vaccinations, so it wasn't controlled. So I think it's important to note that, um, that we rely on uh, robust studies that are, con that are conducted around the world. We analyse the rigour of those studies. There is a very um, clear rejection and repudiation of that study by the Henry Ford Health Centre itself for a number of reasons. And so... Uh, one of the things that I think is important to note that we, um, we uh, look for and accept safety signals from around the world. We look for and review and incorporate appropriately research that's done around the world. And as I've indicated, um, the overwhelming body of evidence indicates that there is no linkage between vaccines and autism. So can you, just as my final question on this topic, um, can you please direct me to uh, any studies you're aware of which show that, let, that there is no link between childhood vaccination and autism, and you can do that on notice if you like. Happy to do it on notice. I have 14 here I can read to you, but I'll do it on notice. I've like got 20 that I can show you that say the opposite. I imagine, um, you, I imagine you do. Yeah, I, I do. 